I mean, there's different kinds of people. There, alhamdulillah, there are people, especially uh, in the Muslim community now, that have found motivation. And they're really driven to do things. And they get really frustrated because their friends aren't motivated, mm -hmm. right? First of all, you have to be patient with your friends because you weren't always motivated yourself. It took a while to get you to a certain point, right? And you can't give up on your friends. You can't say, oh, they're not motivated. Forget it. I won't even call them the next time. No, you keep calling them. You keep inviting them. You pastor them, you pastor them, you pastor them until you, they finally listen this one time. Because it all, all it takes is one reminder coming out of somebody's mouth and by Allah's permission that reminder is like a bullet that goes through any bulletproof vest and goes right into the heart. And it hits a person and it can change their life. My words and your words can't change anybody. But when Allah puts power in our words, He decides one time for this one person, it could be a million people watching this video. But there's one person sitting there that these words will reach and Allah decides it's going to change their life. And He can. Nuh is probably a much, definitely a much better speaker than we'll ever be. He's talking for how long to the same audience? 950 years, nothing changes, right? Which means for us, we can't quit reminding and we can't quit re remembering that Allah is the one who changes people. And motivation is like that, it'll come over time. Like Umar, my favorite example, Umar mm -hmm. The Prophet started delivering his message for five years, this guy was not Muslim radiallahu anhu. The question is, what was he doing for five years? We understand how he became Muslim, that's a later story. But if you ask what's he doing for five years, you could basically answer that with one word, partying. The guys going out hunting, horseback riding, beating up some dudes. So if you call him, hey, have a, let's have a discussion about the purpose of life. Or about the afterlife, or I gotta go shoot some spears or something, you know what I'm saying? He was busy. There are people like that even today. Hey, you wanna go to a lecture? Nah, man, I gotta catch a movie. No, nah, there's a game, it's game time. It's Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's football time. It's whatever, you know? People have things they're doing. But you, have, you can't give up on people like that because Allah describes their hearts like a rock that's got water inside and you keep tapping at it and you tap at it and you tap at it and eventually a little tiny crack. And when that crack happens, water comes out water just like comes faith out. comes out. Yes. It's just like that faith comes out. So some people, it's easy, they just completely transform overnight and for some people, it takes a long time. And we should be respectful of that and not give up on those kinds of people. You don't give up on people. You keep making dua for them, you keep striving behind them. You know, we think when we give somebody a reminder and they don't change right away, that, man, this guy doesn't listen. She doesn't listen, she doesn't care. We don't realize, when you say something to somebody, it goes inside the ear, it's like, a, it's like getting exposed to allergies, it sits there and after a while you react, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that, it could sit there and simmer and simmer and simmer and eventually, it comes out of Islam. That's actually what happened with Omar, the story of Omar. He heard Islam way back, early on. He heard it from the Prophet himself. He tried to beat up the Prophet one time before he was Muslim. He hid behind the veil of the Kaaba at night time. The veil is black, the Kaaba is black, and he's hiding behind it. It's completely invisible. There's no night lighting at the time. And the Prophet was praying and he hid behind it until he snuck right in front of the Prophet. The Prophet was praying and reciting Quran. And he recited and he thought, Omar is listening to the Quran and he thinks to himself, this is beautiful. Wow. He must be a poet. He didn't say it, he was thinking it. And the Qur'an says, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرِ It's not the word of a poet. The Prophet didn't hear him, but this was the next verse that he was reciting, the next ayah that he was reciting. Omar said, how do you know that? He must be a mind reader. The next verse, next ayah is, وَمَا, بقولي, وما هُوَ بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنِ It's not the word of a mind reader. قَدِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ How little you like to remember. How little an effort you make to truly remember. تَنزِيلٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It's the revelation from the master of all worlds. He got so terrified, he ran away. That's actually not the day he became Muslim. He just he was so shocked by what just happened. He came to attack the Prophet ﷺ. He ran away. He, he became Muslim much after that. But you know what? The first crack had already been caused.